The truth is, unless you're buying a home once a year, it can feel like a brand new experience every time you do it. Think about it. Based on the last place and the last time you purchased a home, the real estate market can be drastically different. In this video, Rob Lee, full-time Texas realtor and real estate investor will share with you how to buy a home without ending up in a money pit. What's up, Legacy Builders? I'm Rob. I'm Rishon. And, and this, this is, is Learn, Learn Hustle, Hustle Grow. Grow. She's a stock trader. He's a realtor. And we are debt-free investors. If you've been following our journey, then you know that at the end of 2018, we left our W-2 jobs, and in 2019, we traveled the world. We focused on debt pay down and long-term investing in both real estate and the stock market to achieve financial independence. On this channel, you'll find videos on the topics of money, real estate, and investing. Occasionally, we share our travel experiences. If you're new to this channel, we're glad you found us. If you've been with us for a while, welcome back. Either way, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. We began investing in real estate in 2013. In 2017, I became a licensed Texas realtor, helping people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. As real estate investors, we've purchased both single family and multifamily housing. We've purchased here in Texas as well as out of state. We've also purchased real estate using a 1031 exchange and we've been participants in a syndication deal. All of this to say, we have more experience than the average homeowner. In addition to our direct experience, as a full-time licensed realtor, Rob Lee studies the real estate market on a daily basis. Now let's talk about why we love real estate. Let's start with the fact that God is not making any more land. That alone makes it a precious resource. We have not received any inheritance and we don't expect any. However, we understand that here in the United States, significant wealth has been handed down in the form of real estate. Whatever the state of the economy, we all need a place to live. Real estate is essential. The accumulation of equity through principal pay down by our tenants is one of the ways we make money as real estate investors. We love the tax advantages that come with owning real estate. The IRS allows the reduction of earned income tax on cash flow through a variety of deductions. If we need another reason, real estate cash flow is part of our retirement plan. Have you purchased a home or investment property in the last two years? If so, comment below. Listen, in 2021, the market was on fire. Homes are going between 20 and 50 K over asking here in Dallas, Fort Worth. So how would you compare the real estate market last year versus this year? What are some of the differences? Okay. Some of the obvious difference differences are the interest rate. Uh, the interest rates were like really in the dirt, you know, last year, right? They were like historical lows, yes, right? History, yeah, 30, like 3%. Some people even said something a little, a little bit lower, right? And now they're up to about 7%, which is, you know, histor historically, it's, they've, been here, they've been here before, just, you know, they're just not as low as the 3%. Um, what else? The competition. Competition was fierce last year, right? Mm. It was, I was seeing an average of 20 people bidding on a house or 30 people bidding on a house. It was so ridiculous that, right, you know, right. It was, it was, actual offers. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was hard to win, you know, um, and only strong survived on that. Right. And, uh, and then mainly now there's just so much more inventory than last year. We had like zero inventory or less than less than a month inventory. Mm -hmm. Now we got a few months inventory. So you got the pick of the litter. So, so if you're looking to buy, this is a good time as far as having your choice of the yes, home you want. No competition. Yeah. Right. So now whether or not this is your first home or your third home, there are some things you need to be aware of as a buyer. Mm -hmm. Let's start with how much house you can afford. So Rob, how should a buyer determine how much house they can realistically afford? So the truth is you got two numbers here. You got what the lender says you mm -hmm. can afford and you got what you can actually afford. What's in your budget, right? Now, for example, if a lender says, Hey, you qualify for up to $600,000, right? Mm. That does not mean you should go and get a $600,000 house, right? What does it mean? It means you need to look at your budget, look at your spending and look at what percentage this is going to be of your monthly paycheck. A rule, a good rule of thumb these days is 28% of your monthly income should mm. go towards your house, right? You know, some people might push that a little more or whatever, but if you feel like you can 
afford that house, if it's floating around that 28% and you can afford that house, then it's probably a good buy instead of maxing out and end up being house poor. Yeah, so. and house poor comes along when you are looking at 50-50. If the mortgage is 50% of your income, yeah. there's a pretty good chance that you are struggling or will struggle to keep mm. up with the payment. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I have another question. Mm. I've heard people say that when they choose their realtor, they don't want to choose anybody close to them because <laughs> they don't want them in their business. Right. Well does the realtor actually see the buyer's financials i mean are you looking at pay subs do you have any idea how much money the buyer makes yeah this is a huge misconception absolutely not um i've heard this before myself from friends and family we see zero of your income pay stubs any of that mm -hmm. that goes directly to the lender i mean that's illegal so it goes directly to the lender they're checking on your credit they're checking on everything you you know make and everything to qualify you they don't tell me anything they can't tell they can't tell me anything all i see is a pre-approval letter for the amount of that house you want or you know pre-qualification whatever and that's that's about it i mean i i get i get no real information except just say hey can you afford it yes and you're approved and that's it. Okay. So while we're on the topic of the mortgage, let me ask this. Most people start with a 30 year mortgage. Yes. Are there other options? And if so, what are there? Yeah, so actually what exists is like, a, they have 10 year, mm. 15 year, 20 year, and 30 year. Most of the time we only hear about the 15 and the 30 year. Uh, so it depends on your financial situation, but the, the thing is you got to remember is if you get like um, certain, you know, certain gurus, they say, hey, get a 15 year. And I get it because you save a ton of interest on that. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, you, just remember, if you do a lower, if you do a 15 year instead of a 30 year, your payment's going to be higher. Uh, but then you will save in, in the long term on your interest, you know, the overall the uh, overall loan. So. Yeah. So when we purchased our current home, uh, interest rates were great. So mm -hmm. we started with a 15 year mortgage yep. and that allowed us to pay our home off early. Yep. Check out the how we paid off our mortgage in five years video. Yes. Now on our first home which eventually became our first rental. We started with a 30 year mortgage on that home. Yep. And when rates improved, we refinanced and went for the 15 year mortgage. Yes. So then my next question would be, how hard is it to refinance or is it hard? Hmm. Okay, so it's not that hard. It's, not, it's just, you know, it's kind of just like a, a regular loan, you know? You just gotta know if it is the right time, right? Mm -hmm. Because you need your proof of income, you need your financials, you need your credit score, whatever, all those things. Um, and you need to you need to know that uh, your closing costs are gonna be between two and six percent. So when you calculate all that up, you know, is it worth it, right? Because mm -hmm. some people say, hey, you know, I don't like this house or whatever. And then it's the and then the next year they want to refinance, and it's probably not a good idea. Okay, so. okay. So now, when it comes to buying a home, you have the option of buying a new build or buying something existing. Mm -hmm. We have actually um, preferred existing because somebody gets to work all the kinks out in yeah. that new build. But there are some people who only want new construction. Right. Right, because yes. they feel like with new construction, they don't have to worry about issues. Now that's a whole nother video, mm -hmm. but what I think a lot of people would like to know is what kind of issues or things should a person be looking for when they are buying an existing home? Mm -hmm. Most of us are not going to build new. It's not even possible in a lot of big cities. Right. So if you are buying an existing home, what are the things you should be concerned about? Yeah, you want to look for things like, you, know, you just want to make sure that the house has been maintained, mm -hmm. right? Um, and look for things like, especially here in Texas, for example, first thing I look for is like foundation problems. You know, do you see cracks in the walls? Mm -hmm. it, you know, is the floor leaning? Like you feel like it's pushing you, you, you know, walking, yeah. <laughs> you walking towards some uh, one side or the other. Uh, did I say mole already? Mole, cricket windows, mm -hmm. all those type of things, you know, so. Okay, so looking at all of those things, wouldn't an inspection catch everything? Listen, a, an inspection can't catch every single thing, but it does catch like the big ticket items. You know what I'm saying? Like like we were talking about the foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, they you know they they kind of run the water and stuff to check the pipes, um, the roof. You know all the electrical. You can kind of you can kind of they can kind of tell, and they they do really good jobs, especially inspectors that I've I've seen. Um, they they do a great job, but mm -hmm. they can't catch everything. You really gotta do your you know 
check behind everything on your own. So Okay, so with that in mind, what kind of advice would you give to the buyer when it comes to the overall inspection itself or even the inspection report? First of all, never, ever, ever waive the inspection. Okay. People were doing that like hotcakes just to win and I, I can't I, I can't sleep good at night knowing that we waived an inspection because you just never know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We've uh, heard some horror stories this yes. year based on people waving inspections last year. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. People trying to get out of those houses now. But anyway, um, and also get the inspector out there as soon as possible. So you have a option period, right? So let's just say your option, if, if you're, if it's a comp competitive market, then you want to get the option period lower. So instead of having like five days, you might have three days. So you need to get that inspector, see, see if that inspector can come out there that day or the next morning ASAP. Mm -hmm. That way you have some time to negotiate any problems and get stuff fixed or, you know, get those costs reduced or whatever, right? So. Yeah. But isn't the isn't it the realtor's responsibility to read and go over the inspection report? No, ma'am. No. Uh, it is the buyer's ultimate responsibility in mm. the end. Yeah, you, that's why you hire an inspector. He's a, he's he or she is the professional to do that. They give you everything they saw. Then it's, so it's like three sets of eyes, y'all. The inspector points out everything. Then you. I've seen a thousand times people don't really read the inspection report. It is really totally up to you to go through every page of that report and mm -hmm. point out things and say, hey, what do you think? And then we discuss it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I definitely put give my input and say, hey, I don't know. I don't like this, you know, and I hate you had to spend the money on the report. But, you know, it's much better than buying a three, four, five hundred right. thousand dollar house, you know, right. losing five hundred bucks or whatever. But yeah, so I put my input. You are ultimately the responsible on choosing, you know, and of course the inspector does his or her job. So, okay. so you know, realistically speaking, an older home is more likely to have issues mm. than a newer home. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you give a buyer who is considering the purchase of an older home? Yeah, when when old, when buying an older home, I guess it depends on how old, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, I just heard a story of a young lady and she said that she bought an older house and she said everything looked great it was painted it was everything was cleaned up they had new countertops all this and that right but she knew the house was built in like 67 right mm -hmm. so in older houses you really got to be aware of plumbing like iron cast plumbing it can be scary um that would be copper uh electrical um, and of course foundation, right? Foundation is the, the most obvious one, but yeah, look, you can do additional inspections, especially for like the pipes. Oh yeah. By the way, she did tell me also that she had to do, had to spend $6,000 on pipes the same year she bought the house, mm -hmm. even though everything looked fine, but you've got to be careful when it comes to those, because they've changed, you know, to, they've changed that pipe and we don't use, uh, you know, iron cast, uh, pipe pipes anymore. Right. right. So, uh, they got the, like these things called stress tests on the pipes and you can pay an additional amount when when they do the inspection and run like a line and a camera through there and then you know you can check it out so okay that's great advice mm -hmm. especially considering in some places a home built in 67 is not old right i remember my oh, yeah. first apartment <laughs> in chicago that would have actually been fairly close to new yeah but in places like dfw mm. that is definitely considered an older home yeah. um but looking at the fact that you've mentioned foundation a few times now yeah. let's talk about that a little bit okay. how much does it cost to fix foundation <laughs> issues okay so foundation issues can be very expensive right because everything's built on that foundation right so my opinion is you have to so you got to first of all you'll see you'll see the you know cracks in the walls you'll see the leaning floors sometimes you'll see the roof separating from the top of the house right mm -hmm. um, so if you think you want to deal with the house um, that has foundation issues, you know, after get, getting your inspection or whatever, then you should also you should get a separate foundation inspection to look closer and see how much this this is going to range, you know, to get it fixed properly, mm -hmm. right? A lot of times they, they people claim that that's what I want to say. People claim that their foundation problems have been fixed, and they say, oh, we have a warranty and we have this and that. Mm -hmm. But guess what? the warranties are not as good as the paper is written on, you know, because mm -hmm. they didn't do it correctly. People cheap out on foundation repairs, y'all, most of the time. And wow. the truth is, if yeah, if you look at a foundation report and they show you the price and it's pro and it's not 20 grand, 
they probably didn't do it right. It, it, it ranges from 20 grand plus to get it done properly, so. Yeah, in our personal experience, we actually purchased an investment property yes. that had foundation issues. It did come with a warranty, and we went a few years before the um, issues actually came to a head and mm -hmm. they were noticeable. But they did come up again. Yes. So we paid to have it repaired properly, and then we made the decision to go ahead and, and sell that yeah. home. That was, so so our, the warranty that we already had, right? So there's one thing about the warranty you need to know is that as the buyer, you need to make sure that you get that warranty transferred over to you within the first 30 days after closing. Right. If you decide to buy a house with foundation issues. Now, if you're looking at that house and Rob, as Rob shared with you, go ahead and get somebody to come out to give you a quote. You want to do that before you close on the property. Because yes. once you close, it's too late. Yeah. It's game over. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've covered the topic of the foundation. Um, so then my next question uh, of how much it costs. So then my next question is, would you actually advise a buyer to purchase a home with foundation issues? Okay, so first of all, some lenders won't even you know, fund that purchase if the foundation is bad enough. Mm. So FYI on that. Second of all, if you are a investor or you're a person that, hey, say, hey, I'm ready to deal with this and you have, you know, the cash and you have a team that can go in there and do the construct construction, you know, like a construction team or whatever, mm -hmm. contracting team, whatever you call them. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's on you. You you probably have enough experience to do that, you mm -hmm. know, but as for a regular person that's moving into a house and it's going to be their house they're going to be living in their home and it's not an investment it's not a and they, and they you know don't have all that money to fix that stuff mm -hmm. i would not advise it personally so the answer is it depends on the buyer yeah all right so what about the saying you need to buy the worst home in the best neighborhood okay i mean well listen it's a great idea if you got the money mm -hmm. and you got the time just know everybody this is not hgtv and it may be some in some neighborhoods the worst house is not a terrible terrible house right mm -hmm. so um but if you got the money you got the time and you're ready for the task you know hey do it you know yeah those 30 to 60 minute shows actually are the result of yes, months, months and months yep. of work and tens of thousands of dollars y'all so all right so if you have purchased a home and you are not happy with it what are your options Man, yeah, I just had this conversation with somebody uh, recently. Um, I would say your options are, if you just got the house, your options are you got to live in it until it appreciates enough where you can break even. And when I say break even, I mean get your closing costs back, get mm -hmm. your down payment back, and then just get out of there and hopefully you can sell it, you know, and, you know, that's one thing. Uh, and the second one is fix all the issues while you live in it. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you can rent it out, you know, turn it into a income generating property. Uh, and you know, that way you don't have to, you know, you don't have to fix everything to 100%. You can fix it up, you know, nice enough that's livable mm -hmm. and then you know, if it's a good location, people will probably will rent from you. So yeah, and as investors, we believe that even one investment property can have a huge impact on yes. your life long term. Mm -hmm. Okay, this feels like a good place to stop. Mm -hmm. If someone watching this video wants to buy a home or investment property here in the North Texas area, how can they reach you? Uh, you can email me at rob underscore lee at kw dot com, and you can also check out my website robtxrealtor.com for free MLS access. All right. Got questions? Drop them in the comments below. See, See you in the, the next video. video.